like an atom bomb when he comes, when he comes. We present Dr. Strangelove, based on the novel by Peter George and dramatized for radio by Carrie Shale. Starring Carrie Shale as Dr. Strangelove, Lieutenant Sweets Kivel, Lieutenant Barney Goldberg, Lieutenant Lothar Zog, Group Captain Lionel Mandrake, General Jack D. Ripper, and President Merkin Muffley. Oh, I say, everybody's worried, yeah, about the atomic bomb. But nobody's worried, no, about the day my Lord will come, when he'll hit great God Almighty like an atom bomb. When he comes, good Lord, when he comes. The time is precisely six megasnarts in the third podmark. This is the Universal Broadcasting Corporation. And now, Tales from the Cosmic Void. Here are your friends, Poot, as Nis 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 Bible Snatter, and Zhang Zhu. Hello. I'm Put, has nis 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 farble snatter. And I'm Zhlong. Zuyip. Today's tale from the cosmic void is the first part of a very old and very sad story. And do you know that although this is a make-believe story handed down through the ages, our records tell us that much of it may actually be true. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I hope our listeners have more brain snobblies than you, Zhlong. Ready, everyone? Are you floating comfortably? Then we'll begin. I'll start, Schlong. Oh, very well, you start. Once upon a time, long, long ago, on a faraway planet in a distant solar system, there lived two kingdoms. One was called Russia, the other was known as the USA, or America. This faraway planet went by the name of Earth. It was a small and pretty place while it existed. Earthlings? were a very mysterious race. Although they created beautiful art and lovely music, they also invented terrible weapons of destruction and death. They were not one with the universal mind. They had no notion of wheat wheat, did they, Schlong? None at all. What? In fact, Russia and the USA had invented the same terrible weapon that could kill untold numbers of fellow Earthlings at a single stroke. This weapon was commonly known as the atom bomb. Or sometimes just the bomb. Thank you, Schlong. Not at all. However, towards the end of the 20th Earth century, the two kingdoms agreed to ban this bomb. Everyone looked forward to living happily ever after, now that the evil bomb had been destroyed. Oh, uh, but, um... But what, Schlong? Tell about the secret bombs. What? Thank you, Schlong. I was just coming to that. <sighs> Certain people in the government of the USA were unhappy about losing their lovely bomb and secretly saved some old bombs without telling their fellow earthlings. Around this time, the people of the USA became very sad. Many lost their jobs. Prices rose. Russia, on the other hand, somehow became a happy place to live. After years of poverty and suffering, the sunlight came out and the people became healthy and wealthy. How do they do that? Sounds unlikely. Remember, Schlong. It's just a story. Oh, yes, I forgot. Sorry. Never mind, Schlong. Tell about the leaders of the two kingdoms. Well, the leader of Russia was a handsome man named Dmitry Kisov, who was much beloved of his people. In fact, he studied in the USA, receiving a degree in marketing and management from the Burger City University. The leader of America at the beginning of their 21st century was an unfortunate earth person known as President Merkin Muffley. <coughs> It was shortly after his election that the American economy collapsed completely. This was known as the Second Great Depression because the people were so depressed. Ah, Merkin Muffley! Oh, what a pocky dotty name! Thank you, Schlong. <laughs> I think we'd better begin our play. This is the story of how Earth ceased to be. Merkin <laughs> Schlong. Yes, put. <laughs> Why don't you go soak your farble in a tub of cold donk? Our play begins aboard a crude United States flying vehicle known as a B-52 bomber. 
These huge planes had been retired in 1991, but because of the Second Great Depression, no replacement aircraft was ever commissioned. By late in Earth Year 2003, the unfortunate president, Merkin Muffley, found himself lagging seriously behind in polls which canvassed people's opinions. A gesture of strength was needed with which to divert the attention of the angry public. President Muffley ordered the huge fleet of ancient B-52s back into the skies, circling around their former adversary on a 24-hour alert. The polls showed that the Americans liked this sort of thing. What one of these here, a coaster, dill pickles, ace, mighty tasty? Nobody on board believed that the elderly bombs they carried would ever be dropped. The crew approached their tasks with a mixture of resignation and boredom. This B-52 is approaching its fail-safe point. Once it reaches this geographical position, it will turn and head back to America, to Burpleson Air Force Base. In the cockpit is the plane's commander, Major Noah W. Kahn, known to the rest of the crew as King. He is chatting to his co-pilot, Captain Ace Owens. Damn, there ain't no better taste in the world than bologna and cheese with good old American mustard. Well, there may be one better taste, but I, I ain't going to get any of that till I get back home. Now, where did I put my reading material? Ace, you seen my uh, reading material? Ace, Ace, wake up, girl. What? Come on, you're still on duty. Oh, no, King, I was just uh, <clears throat> meditating. Oh. Here's your magazine. Ah, uh, you can't fool me, little lady. I seen you nod off during the second course. Mm. Back now, but Ace, even if you don't believe, it wouldn't hurt you to raise your voice to the Lord once in a while. Helps to clear the lungs. And I reckon your lungs could do with a little exercise if you catch my drift. And if you ever need any help exercising them big beauties. <laughs> Dream on, big guy. Dream on. Yee-haw! Hey, Ace, take a gander at this. Speaking of lung power, woo doggies. I wouldn't kick that little cowgirl out of my bunkhouse. You just look at them snakeskin boots, too. They're almost as pretty as mine. And look at that. Would you just look at her juicy little... King, I know you consider me just one of the boys, but in certain respects, I'm still my own woman. <laughs> now, why don't you just... Major Kong, man. Uh, what is it, Sweet? Three minutes to turn point, dude. Fresh heading will be 353. Estimated arrival back at Burbleson is 2200 hours. Yeah, yeah, Roger, Sweet's heading 353 in three minutes. Come on, Ace, now what'd you say, huh? Ain't that just the juiciest little... Major Kong, man. What is it now, sweets? Hey, I scored a truly excellent batch of peanut butter cups just before takeoff. You want to try one? No, thanks, sweets. Hey, man, good chocolate's getting scarce. How about a Mars bar, dude? Imported direct from England. Forget it, sweets. I got my own entertainment up here in the cockpit. Boy's got candy where his brain should be. <laughs> See, he's a darn fine navigator. Uh, hey, King. This one kind of reminds me of that brunette you had waving you off after the debriefing in Washington. She was secretary to some high flyer in the Pentagon. Oh, what the heck was her name? Well, just hold up the photo, Ace. Give old King a good long look. Oh. Yee-haw! You're right, girl! You are right! Name of uh, the Mary Ellen. Oh, yeah, that's it. Mary Ellen. <laughs> you bent my ear about her for days. Yeah. She was Double grade A corn fed premium ace. Okay. A beautiful example of the Lord's grace in action. Why, I'd ever tell you what she could do with oh, her please, lips. Oh, please, King, don't get started. Just sit tight and study your picture book like a good boy. Yeah, she was prime beef on the hoof, right off the top hind quarter, just the way I like it. In fact, she reminded me of you, Ace. Oh, yeah? Good lungs. Oh, King, don't you ever think about anything else? <laughs> well, this is the way it is, little Missy. The good Lord gave me an extra special gift, if you catch my drift. Sure, King. Your gift is pretty well known. <laughs> well, all the ladies do seem to appreciate it. It's a kind of spiritual thing. I would be committing a grievous sin to deprive them of it. See, I, I don't like to go up against the Lord. He rarely gets it wrong. <laughs> you are too much. But you know, Ace, I'll tell you, there's one thing in this old world that God's special gift can't help me with. Yeah? Sometimes I lie awake at night thinking about this thing. 
Some nights when it's quiet and dark and I can hear a little slab of prime fat back snoring gently alongside me, I look up into the black emptiness and I feel kind of, well, incomplete without it, without this thing. What one thing do you mean, King? It's the thing I never had. And I don't guess I ever will have it now. What is it, King? Why, combat, girl, combat! What about Vietnam? Too young. Grenada? Too quick. Iraq? They said the B-52 was out of date by then. No good for precision bombing. Only good for dropping the big one. Oh, yeah, or flying back and forth not dropping the big one. Oh, heck, I guess it's the good Lord's will. Well, sir, looks like it's about time to turn this little critter around and head for... King, we got a message from base that I just decoded. The priority action warning is sounded. Well, speak up, Goldberg. What the heck do they want? They're ordering all planes stationed at Burpleson, the entire wing, to hold at their fail-safe points. Hey, Major Dude, what kind of airheads they got running this show? Can't you do something? Dig it, man, I promised to call my babe when we got back to see if she scored those, like, extra crunchy Japanese sesame bars. Don't wet your shorts, kid. It's just another exercise by them danged armchair commanders. Nothing we can do. We've already been going for 14 hours, King, and my guts are playing up. Uh, uh, I think they put horse meat in the breakfast sausages again. Ooh, you're lucky to be working, Goldberg, ain't you heard? <laughs> Zog, report in. Any complaints from you, Lothar? Negative, Captain. All bomb systems remain on standby, awaiting further progression on the possible engagement interface situation. Uh, yeah. Okay, boys, you heard that. Let's follow Lothar's example and keep a cool head. Say, uh, where the heck are we anyhow? Sweets? Uh, right between the North Pole and the Russian coast, dude. Okay, as you were, boys. Uh, pass me over a little, uh... Mary Ellen there, Ace. I'm going to do me some meditating on the wonders of the Lord. Amen. And you can take a look-see at my own personal copy of the good book, if you've a mind. Well, thanks, King, but I think I'll just finish my copy of Cosmo. Well, suit yourself. You know, I get the feeling it's going to be a long night. <laughs> Everybody's worried yeah. about the atomic bomb But nobody's worried, no, not the day my Lord will come When he'll hit great God Almighty like an atom bomb When he comes, good Lord, when he comes Burpleson Base Operations Center, Group Captain Mandrake speaking This is General Ripper, Mandrake uh, Yes, sir You know who I am? Why, certainly, General. Why do you ask, sir? Why do you think I ask, Group Captain? Well, I... I really don't know, sir. You don't think I'd ask unless it was important to you, Group Captain? Uh, no, sir. I I'm sure you wouldn't, sir. Well, that's better, Group Captain. Just remember that you're working as our guest here at Burpleson, and we'll continue to get along fine. Uh, yes, sir. As the entire wing confirmed holding at their failsafe points? Uh, yes, sir. All right, Group Captain. Now listen to me carefully. I'm putting the base on Condition Red. Condition Red? That's right. Condition Red. But what's happened, sir? It looks like we've got ourselves a global war. A, a global war, sir? Yes, Group Captain. It looks like the Ruskies kept a few warheads up their sleeves. Kissoffs pulled a cute one. Good Lord, sir. Have, have they hit anything yet? Group Captain, that's all I've been told. But I don't understand... Now activate Operation Oyster. Operation Oyster? Will you stop repeating every damn thing I say? Uh, sorry, sir, but that's I... right, Group Captain. Operation Oyster. Seal the base, sir. That's what I said. Very good, General. But, um, sir... Now what, Mandrake? I say, sir, something's just occurred to me. Uh, how do I know that I am talking to you? <laughs> Are you trying to anger me, Mandrake? Uh, why, no, General. I, I, I think Then simply... implement Operation Oyster before I come down there and rip that stupid Royal Air Force mustache off your pasty, limey face. I say there's really no need for personal abuse, sir. I shall implement the order as instructed. Good. And while you're at it, get the go code out to the boys in the wing. The go code, sir? Mandrake. Uh, sorry, sir. But it isn't every day I order a thermonuclear attack. 
What exactly is today's go code? Marmalade. Marmalade, sir. Yes, sir. I'll uh, spread it around, sir. Excellent. Now remember, I want the perimeter of the base completely sealed. Completely, sir. Yes. Those damn ruskies are plenty tricky. Oh, they are, sir. Yes. We can't rule out the possibility of a land attack. A land attack? Yes, sir. As soon as you've done that, come over here to my office. Uh, very good, sir. Yes. You're a good listener, Mandrake. Oh,、uh, thank you, sir. And I have a few things I need to get off my chest. Yo, what is it, Goldberg? I just decoded this message: attack using marmalade. Attack using marmalade. Now, what are those old boys playing at? Attack using marmalade. That's exactly what it says. Hey, calm down, Goldie.、Uh, check your gall during code book again. That just can't be right. I have checked it again. Well, you must have made a mistake. You got a problem? I'm、it's... telling you, goddammit, that's how it decodes. Hey, watch your mouth, son. I won't have blaspheming aboard my ship. You don't believe me? Come and see for yourself. Ace put her on automatic. Roger. Lothar, sweets, get yourselves up to the radio compartment pronto. You see, you see. Yeah. All right, get a confirmation on this, Goldberg. Ace, turn that dang alarm off. Roger. Request confirmation. On previous message, that'll do it. Some of these old boys wouldn't know a go code from a cat chip. Come on, come on.、Oh, previous message confirmed. Attack using marmalade. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. What, sir? Combat. But we're carrying thermonuclear devices. That's right, Lothar. Nuclear combat, toe to toe with the Ruski boys. I disagree, sir. I estimate it to be a new exercise of some description. Shoot, Zog, they ain't sending us in there with this payload on no exercise. That's for darn sure. It could be a sort of loyalty test. They give the go code and then the recall code to ascertain who would actually respond in an affirmative fashion. Now listen to me, Lothar. The go code would never, repeat, never be given as a test. You know that as well as I do. This. Means war. I,、uh, I estimate you're right, sir. Darn right, I'm right. Whoa! Anybody want a Kit Kat? But how could it have initiated? Well, that's what I can't figure. Just how it could have started. Those bastards must have launched a surprise attack. That's right. We wouldn't have started it. They must have kept some of their nukes too. Lying Russian bastards. Whoa! I think I'm gonna hurl. It's gonna be tough on the folks back home. My wife, the kids. All right, all right. We have taken a hit. We have been hit. All right. So what does that leave us, huh?、Um, well, I tell you what it leaves us. One response only: reprisal. That's the way it is. They hit us. We got to reprise. Am I right or am I right? You're right, King. Let's get squared away. We got some flying to do. Ace, open the safe and get out the marmalade instructions. Roger, Major. Distribute them to the crew and give me the master copy. All right, our target is the mineral water bottling plant at Laputa.、Huh. Well, must have been some sort of secret missile base all along. Uh, both primary and secondary weapons to be fused. Secondary weapon to be used if primary malfunctions. Got that, Lothar? Roger, Major King, sir. Okay. In about ten minutes, we start losing altitude to keep under their radar. Any questions? Oh, come on, boys! Don't look so blue. This is the Lord's doing. Them Ruskies got religion now. If they truly believe, then they'll be saved. Hallelujah! I can talk to Gina on the atomic telephone. Oh, but no man knows the power. Oh, only God alone. All of them it can cure the sick. 
I destroyed their evil. This was people of power known by God all along. Buck, should I get it? What's that, baby? The phone. Should I get it? Hello? Yes, General Turgidson is here, but I'm afraid he can't come to the phone right now. Well, this is his secretary, Mary Ellen Wood. Why, Freddie, how are you? I'm just fine, thanks. Ooh. Oh, you nasty boy. <laughs> Seriously, Freddie, we were just catching up on some of the General's paperwork. Well, when you become chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, maybe they'll give you a hotel suite to work in, too. No, I'm afraid he's all tied up right now. Oh, Freddy. Oh. <laughs> you old poor cat. I've told you, Freddy, he's all... Oh, all right, if you think so. Buck, General Ball is calling. Tell him to call back. Freddie, the general says, could you go? Are you sure it can't wait? Oh, honey, Freddie says it can't wait. Ah, for Find out what he wants. Freddie, the thing is, the general is in the powder room right now. Could you tell me what it's about? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, just a sec. Buck, General Ball says they monitored a transmission from Burpleson Air Force Base about eight minutes ago. It was directed to the bomb wing on Russian patrol. It decoded as attack using marmalade. Uh, uh, tell him to call, what's his name, the base commander, Ripper. For Pete's sake, why do I always have to think of everything? Freddy, the general suggests you call a General Ripper at... Oh, I see. All communications to the base are down. Oh, Bucky, General Ball says all communications to the base... Uh, Fred, Bucky here. What's going on? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Marmalade, huh? So what's on the threat board? Nothing. Hmm. I don't like the smell of this, Fred. I tell you what you better do, old man. Give Elmo and Charlie a blast and stand by the blower. I'll get back to you. What's up, honey? Uh, uh, nothing. Uh, where's my shorts? I think they ended up on top of the TV. Oh. Where are you going? Uh, no place special. I uh, just thought I'd uh, stroll over to the war room, uh, check out the missile situation. But, Buck, it's three in the morning, oh, and you promised me we could play Blast Off after uh, you showered off that chocolate syrup. Well, the Pentagon needs me, baby. Well, I need you too, Buck. Uh, oh, you know how it is, baby. No, no, I don't know how it is. Now give me your big, strong hand, Bucky. Check out. These missiles. I'll tell you what. You start your countdown right now, and I'll... Count down with me, Bucky. Feel my lights are flashing. My pressure is building. My button is waiting. Now, honey, please don't do that. You know how I... My button is just waiting to be put real. No, 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 no. Don't you worry. Old Bucky will be back to press your button. Bucky. Oh, Bucky. Oh, yes. Press my little button. Oh, Bucky. Oh, before you can say... Oh, blast off! Re-entry! We go. I love you, baby, baby, me, don't go.
is fraught with danger. Danger from without, and most importantly, danger from within. The Ruskies are coming. Be brave. Be strong. Beware. They may come in disguise. Suspect everyone. Trust no one. And always remember this. We have only one choice. And one choice only. To hold to our belief in the innate purity of the American system and in the purity of our sacred bodily essences. That is the danger from within. Pollution of the soul and spirit. <laughs> In conclusion, men, I would like to wish good luck to you all. I know you won't let me down. We will wake tomorrow to a cleaner and purer world. God bless you all. Sir. Ah, Group Captain Mandrake. Would you care for a pure grain alcohol and rainwater? Yeah. Rainwater, sir? That's right, son. Rainwater. Okay, boys, I have to hand out these survival kits on account of we'll shortly be entering into enemy airspace. In each of them, you will find uh, one 45 caliber automatic pistol, two boxes ammunition, four days concentrated emergency rations, one fishing line and hooks, six plastic worms for use with same one pocket knife, one compass, uh, one drug issue containing antibiotic pills, morphine pills, vitamin pills, pet pills, sleeping pills, tranquilizer pills, and hemorrhoidal ointment. One miniature combination Russian phrase book and holy Bible. One hundred dollars in gold. One hundred dollars in rubles. Rubles, sir. Yeah, whatever. A plastic bottle of mineral water and three packs of condoms. Oh, and uh, Ace. Sir. Uh, your kid has a few uh, you know, extra items. Yes, sir. Thank you. Step sir. forward as I call your name. Zog. Sir. Goldberg. Uh, uh, any laxatives in there? That horse meat has me all clogged up. Sweets. Hey, dude, no chocolate? Hey, Fever, Mr. President. I guess it's that time of year. Just a touch of the flu, cartwheel. Nothing serious. Gesundheit, tight, Mr. President. Oh, thank you. You know, cartwheel... I must confess that I've never been up to the war room. It seems like a heck of a long trip. Well, sir, I'm told it's a heck of a big room. I've never actually been in it either, you understand. Mm -hmm. I just accompany you through the security gate to the Pentagon's sub-basement liftoff area. From there, you will strap yourself into the chair, Mr. President, and the hydraulic shaft will lift you three floors up, straight to the head of the war room conference table. You pop through a trap door on the floor. <laughs> Should make a very impressive entrance, sir. Seems a bit excessive, Cartwheel. Why not just use a regular elevator? I believe it was ex-President Reagan's idea, sir. He liked to ride up and down on the chair when he was feeling frisky. Can't we go any faster, Cartwheel? Oh, yes, sir. Miss Baby can really move if you open her up. Great little machine, sir. Russian, of course. Of course. <laughs> Just on tight, Mr. President. Oh. Here we are, sir. Sir. Uh, good morning, Captain. Uh, open the security gate, please. Good morning, sir. Your pass? Uh, my pa Oh, yes. Well, uh, oh, no, I I've... Uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm afraid I've left my wallet back at the White House. I'm sorry, sir, but this is an ultra-maximum security area. Security Regulation 134B, Section 7, Subsection D, Item 6, requires that an ID pass must be surrendered by all personnel entering the war room. There may be no exceptions to this regulation, sir. Captain, this is a very delicate situation. The National Security Council is already assembled upstairs and waiting for me on a matter of the gravest urgency. Every second may be important. You have my personal assurance that the rules may be overlooked on this occasion. I'm sorry, sir. I cannot allow you to enter, despite your resemblance to President Muffley. Security Regulation 134B, Section 7, Subsection D, Item 6, requires that an ID pass! Oh. 
Uh, thank you, Cartwheel. All in the line of duty, sir. Have a seat, sir, and strap yourself in. I'll switch it on when you're ready. Ready, sir? Very good, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. President. President, 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 President. Uh, one moment uh, before we begin. Uh, Staines. Sir. Is everyone here who should be here? Sir, the Secretary of State is on vacation in Bangkok. The Secretary of Defense is holding a press conference this morning to deny those heinous accusations of gun running to South America. Oh, yeah. And the new Vice President is still being held hostage by the rebel factions in Los Angeles. Otherwise, all present, sir. Thank you, Staines. Oh, um, Staines, who is the elderly gentleman with the thick glasses over there in the wheelchair? Why, that's Dr. Strangelove, Mr. President. D Dr. Who? No, uh, Dr. Strangelove, sir. His name used to be German, of course, before the war, before he came over to our side. <coughs> Although he rarely appears in public, Dr. Strangelove has been in attendance at every emergency meeting of the National Security Council since 1948. He's gotten us out of one or two tight scrapes in his day. I see. What is that uh, device mounted onto the front of the wheelchair? Uh, his computer keyboard, sir. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove lost the use of his voice box some years ago. A computerized voice device replicates his original speech patterns. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, Staines, have you got an aspirin? My head is pounding. Mr. President, so uh, I am ready to report on behalf of the Joint Chiefs and myself. Oh, uh, yes, uh, please be seated, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> All right, General Turchison. What exactly is going on? Mr. President, we have a situation. Obviously, I don't expect to be got out of my bed at this hour for nothing. Just what is the nature of the situation? Well, uh, now, uh, Mr. President, it appears that over 30 bombers of one of our airborne alert wings have been ordered to attack their targets inside Russia. Each plane is loaded with 40 megatons of old-style thermonuclear devices. That is, 40 million tons of TNT. Yes. As you can see from the time code on the big board overhead, the aircraft will begin penetrating Russian radar cover inside 25 minutes from now. Are you saying... Yeah! Yes! God bless you, sir. You see, it seems that General Ripper of Burpleson Air Force Base in Arizona, one of our finest bases, sir, decided to take out the Ruskies all by himself. I find this very difficult to understand, General. I am the only one who has authority to order the use of our nuclear weapons. Well, that's entirely correct, sir. You are the only person so authorized. I hate to judge before all the facts are in, but it's beginning to look like General Ripper kind of exceeded his authority. But that is impossible. Ah, you're forgetting the provisions of marmalade, sir. Marmalade? That's right, sir. Surely you must recall, marmalade is the go code for an emergency war plan in which a lower echelon commander can order nuclear retaliation in case of a sneak attack if the normal chain of command has been disrupted. Okay. Freddy, perhaps you could refresh the president's memory. Uh, certainly, Buck. You must remember, sir, when Senator Fudge made all that fuss about possible double cross by the Russians after we signed the disarmament treaty. Uh, I... The idea was for Marmalade to be a sort of retaliatory safeguard. Mm. If they pull a fast one and somehow eliminated you and Buck, or even me and Charlie and Elmo, sure. why, they still wouldn't catch the US of A with a pounce down because the lower-ranked generals could still stick it to them. That's, that's, that's right. right. Uh, yeah. Senator Fudge promised to drop that little uh, investigation into your brother's tax shelters in return for your approval of the marmalade plan, sir. All right, all right. <coughs> Has there been any indication whatsoever of hostile Russian intentions in the last few hours, or even the last few days or weeks. Now, why, no, sir, there has not. The more I think about it, this really is beginning to look like a very unfortunate misuse of marmalade. The planes have already flown beyond their failsafe points. The GO code has been issued. Well, why haven't you countermanded the GO code? I'm afraid we're unable to communicate with any of the aircraft. This is absurd! Once the go code is given, Mr. President, the planes are instructed to block all regular radio contact unless it is the actual recall code. Well, then, send the recall code at once, General. 
You see, sir, in the case of marmalade, the lower echelon commander designates the recall code. In this case, it would be known only to General Ripper. We're plowing through every possible combination of the code, sir, but it'll take about a week to transmit them all. How, how soon did you say our planes would penetrate Russian radar cover? Uh, about 21 minutes from now, sir. Uh... Are you in contact with General Ripper? No, sir. General Ripper has sealed off his base and cut all communications. Well, then where the heck did you get all this information? Uh, sir, if I may intervene for a moment. Yes, yes, General... Uh, Cap, sir. Cap. Go on. Uh, well, sir, General Ripper called Strategic Air Command Headquarters shortly after he issued the GO code. I have a transcript of that conversation here, if you'd like me to read it. Please. <clears throat> My brave boys have gone in. Nothing can bring them back. Send in the rest of the Air Force immediately before the Russian despoilers can retaliate. You will thank me for this when we prevail in peace and freedom from fear through the purity and essence of our natural fluids. God bless all of us. Fluids? What was that about fluids? Uh, yes, sir, here it is. In peace and freedom from fear through the purity and essence of our natural fluids. Uh, we're still trying to figure out the meaning of that phrase, sir. There's nothing to figure out, General Gap. The man's obviously a dangerous psychotic. Well, Mr. President, I'd like to hold off judgment on a thing like that until all the facts are in. General Turgidson, you assured me when this marmalade thing was first mooted that it was a foolproof system. I don't think it's fair to condemn a whole system for a single little slip-up, sir. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, General... Uh, Stenchman, sir. Stenchman. Well, what does the Army have to say about this mess? Sir, we are professionals. We know our jobs. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, we can all understand what kind of a strain you must be under just having been rosted out of a sickbed. And if I may suggest, sir, perhaps it might be best if you just let us run this thing. Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's a very, very well good idea. Well put. Gentlemen, I want one thing understood and understood clearly. I am running this thing right to the end. It is my responsibility and my right, and anyone who feels his professional talents are not receiving sufficient recognition may hand in his resignation, which will be instantly accepted. Yeah, well, now, Mr. President, I uh, uh, certainly meant no offense. Uh, good. Now... <coughs> Are there any army units near Burpleson? Yeah, why, yes, sir. I believe there's an airborne division positioned about seven miles away. I, I was Tell the officer in charge to start his men moving immediately. I want them there within 15 minutes. Order them to penetrate the base, locate General Ripper, and put him in immediate telephone contact with me. Very good, sir. Air President Muffley, may I pose a question? Uh, why, certainly, uh... Dr. Strange. Strange love, sir. Dr. Strange love. Hey, President, it is simply this. What is your plan for the future if the Russians have been keeping their bombs? Also, the possibilities of imminent global nuclear holocaust must be considered. Thank you, Why? Uh, Is I, uh... your permission... Very sensible, Doctor. I, uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Oh, I say, everybody's worried, yeah, about the atomic bomb. But nobody's worried, no, not the day my Lord will come. When he'll hit great God Almighty like an atom bomb. When he comes, good Lord, when he comes. Sweets, give me our new rate of descent. Uh, make it 1,500 per minute, man. That should slide us right under their radar cover. Roger, adjusting trim. Ace, throttle her back. Throttling back. Descent steady at 1500, speed steady at Mach 0 0.9. Ready for checks. Lothar, how about it? All bomb systems green. Roger, all bomb systems green. That is correct. When exactly do you want to arm the bombs for primary target, Major? Well, what do you say, sweets? How long to target? Uh, 85 minutes to primary target, dude. Well, stand by to arm at 60 minutes to target, Lothar. 
Goldberg, report on radar conditions. Goldberg! I think he's back into John again, man. Stormy weather Can't get my poor self together Mandrake, will you uh, pardon me for a minute or two? I, I believe I'm about to lose my breakfast. General? Uh, General Ripper? Oh, dear. Um, uh, je- je- Burpleson Base, uh, General Ripper's office. Uh, no, I'm afraid he's uh, busy at the moment. Could I... Uh, why no? What do you mean? Uh... Ye- I say, are you quite sure? There was no threat. Do you mean to say that he... Oh, dear. Um, no, I'm afraid I don't know any more than you at this point. You see, um... Well, actually, he's in the lavatory at the moment. Uh, the bathroom. Yes, I know, but... Well, to be frank, it is rather awkward to disturb one's commanding officer when he's otherwise engaged. Yes, yes, but surely you can appreciate the difficulty of my... Yes, but look here, I... Yes, of course, but I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, but there is simply no excuse for that kind of rudeness. Good day to you. What a particularly coarse and vulgar person. Uh, sir? Yes, Mandrake? With respect, I have a rather unpleasant question to ask. Ask away, group captain. Uh, why have you ordered an unprovoked nuclear attack on Russia? <sighs> I say... Uh, Now, please remain calm, Group Captain. I have no desire to do you harm. Are you threatening a brother officer with a gun, sir? (laughs) Just cool off, Mandrake. I'll leave the firearms right here. Now, uh, pour me a pure grain alcohol and rainwater, and one for yourself while you're at it. If you say so, sir, but I wish you would explain exactly what you... Relax, Mandrake. There's nothing anybody can do about it now. (laughs) I'm the only man who knows the recall code. (laughs) How much rainwater, sir? Half and half. Very good, sir. Uh. And now, let's drink a toast, group captain. Sir! To the purity and essence of our natural fluids. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, you were going to tell me something. All in good time, group captain. All in good time. Uh, But, General Ripper, with respect, sir, you can't simply order a nuclear attack against an essentially unarmed and, well, friendly country without a bit of explanation. (laughs) Give it a little thought, Group Captain. Do the words fluids and juices mean anything to you? Uh, uh, yes, I see your point, right. Dang tootin', I'm right. Say, are you a rusky lover, Mandrake? Oh. Good Lord, no, sir. I'm an officer of the Royal Air Force. (laughs) Just what I meant. The RAF is full of rusky lovers. Well, I... I, You know, Group Captain, I visited a lot of RAF bases during the last few years, and I saw some very interesting graffiti in some of the base toilets. Sir, I... I'm something of a collector, you might say. Toilet graffiti is the real voice of the people. Interesting theory, sir, yes. Interesting fact. And do you know... You know what I saw written on your toilet walls on more than one occasion? I'm afraid I couldn't possibly guess. Kiss off for king! I beg your pardon? Kiss off for king. Oh, yeah. Saw it plenty of times. Sir, The rusky president. And you guys wanted to make him king! I do. How do you explain that if you aren't all rusky lovers? Well, um, we've had a bit of trouble with the monarchy this past few years. (laughs) Sorry, sir. Not funny. Not funny at all, group captain. In a few hours, your pal Kissoff is going to be kissing his ass goodbye. <laughs> Now, uh, pour us another pure grain alcohol. Oh, and uh, Mandrake. Sir? Go easy on the rainwater. I've made up my mind. Get me President Kissoff on the hotline immediately. Yes, Mr. President. <coughs> uh, Mr. President, could I run a few ideas up the flagpole and see if you salute? Yes, General. What are they? 
Well, sir, they are as follows. One, our hopes for recalling those planes are, quite frankly, nil. Two, in less than 15 minutes, the Ruskies are bound to make radar contact with our boys. Three, when they do, they will, let's be frank here, go absolutely ape and strike back with everything they've got. Four, we don't know if they've been holding out on us about this disarmament thing, now do we? All the treaties and spy satellites and inspections in the world don't mean diddly squat when it comes right down to it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to hang on to our own bomb now, would we? So what I'm leading up to here is, uh, five, let's do the job and let's do it right. Go all the way, like Ripper suggests. Launch a coordinated attack on their major military centers before they get wind of things. Heck, even if they haven't get the big one, these Ruskies are pesky fighters, I can tell you. My conclusion, therefore, is six. If we take immediate action, we will prevail pretty darn quick and only suffer modest civilian casualties. In short, Mr. President, let's get out there and kick some Russian butt. <laughs> what do you say? General Turchison, it is the avowed policy of this country, albeit a secret one, that we will never strike first with our remaining nuclear weapons. Yes, okay, but General Ripper is already that initiated... That was not an act of national policy! That was the act of a crazy person! Besides, the civilian casualties will be bad enough from their conventionally armed missiles. If they have managed to retain the bomb, then major cities would be wiped out. Well, now, I'm not saying that we might not get our hair messed up a bit, Mr. President, but I do say that even if the brakes really go against us, we would suffer no more than 20 to 30 million dead. General, I do not intend to go down in history as the greatest mass murderer of all time. Perhaps it might be better, Mr. President, if you concerned yourself more about the American people and less about your image in the history books. General Turgidson, sit down before I knock you down. Oh, right, sir. Staines. Sir. Find out what's happening with that call to President Kissoff. Yes, sir. And would you please try to find me an aspirin? Uh, yes, sir. <sighs> Gentlemen. Yes, 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 sir. I've Take had... Your aspirin, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, Staines. I've had my aide make a number of calls on my behalf. One of them was to the military police. I've asked them to escort Ambassador Dasadsky to the war room to take part in this meeting. What? The Russian ambassador? Here? That is correct, General. Sir, are you aware of what a serious breach of security that would be? You'll see the big board, the exact location of our bombers. Facts, figures, everything. General Ball, that is precisely the idea. God, I can add a bomb. When he comes, when he comes. Well, God told Lodge he would send down fire. What is it, Zog? 60 minutes to target. Ready for bomb fusing. Okay, Zog, let's get those little fat babies up and a ticking. Are you sure, King? <laughs> sure, Maybe I'm sure. Go on, boys. Well. Now, everybody's Lothar, worried Ready, about sir. the dumb... Activate arming switch. But nobody's worried Activated. about the day Circuit my Lord is live. Roger. Hit. Activate God trigger almighty, switch. Activate trigger switch. Like an atom trigger bomb. switch. When Activated. Comes, Roger. When Release first, second, and third safety. Well, God told Lodge he would send down second, fire. And send down fire safeties. from on Release. high. He told his brother Roger. Noah about the rainbow Activate sign. Activate fusing on both no bombs. water but fire in the sky. Now, don't Four, get worried. Just three, bear in mind. Two, kings. one. Fusing complete. Both bombs armed and ready. Ace? Yes, King? I have only one thing to say at this historic moment of time. What's that, sir? Give me the megaphone, Captain Nats. Sir. Attention, men of Burpleson Air Force Base. This is Colonel Guano commanding an airborne division of the United States Army. Can you hear me? Men of Burpleson, listen to me carefully. 
This is Colonel Bat Guano, U.S. Army speaking. Why are you firing at us? We are here on a special mission from the President of the United States. In the name of the President, lay down your weapons. I think I'm getting through to him, Nabs. All right, men. Now, I'm not fooling around. There is no time to waste. We are on a mission from the President to enter the base and put him in touch with General Ripper. Unless you surrender within 60 seconds, I will return your fire and forcibly penetrate your defenses. My men are highly trained and battle experienced. Be reasonable! Take C Company around in the flank. Attack at will. That hot time in old town, down town tonight. Hot time in old town tonight. What's our position, sweets? Uh, we should hit the coast in about six minutes, man. We're on track. Looking cool. Roger. King. Yo! Enemy missile. 45 miles off, heading in fast. All right, go right, Goldie. Keep on calling it in and keep your head. Knock off the autopilot, Ace. Autopilot off. Lock ECM to master search radar. ECM locked to master search radar. Goldie, you picking up any fighters? Negative. Uh, just the missile. 35 miles. Closing straight and fast. All righty. Lothar, prepare to release decoy missile. Roger. Decoy ready for release. Come in, Goldie. What's the distance? 30 miles. 12 o'clock and straight. Release decoy. <laughs> Decoy, release. We have ignition on the decoy. Roger. Changing course 90 degrees. Enemy missile at 20 miles. Heading in straight. It's not following the decoy. 15 miles. Christ. Language chase. Sorry, sorry. Hang on in there, boys. I'm gonna lose that pesky little critter if it's the last gall darn thing I do. Ten. Just for maximum power, Ace. Adjusting throttles. Six. Climb, darling, climb. Four. Enemy missile veering towards decoy, but we're still too close. Climb, Dag Nibbit. Two miles. One. <laughs> oh, sweet we've Jesus. We've been hit. We've been hit. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Stability is okay. <laughs> Controls operating okay. Come on in. Damage reports. <laughs> oh, sweet We've been Jesus. hit. We've been hit. <laughs> All right, everybody. Stability is okay. <laughs> Controls operating okay. Come on in. Damage reports. <laughs> Seems to be negligible down in bomb control, Major. Roger. Uh, there's some smoke in the navigation deck, but otherwise everything's copacetic, man. That's my boy, Roger. I can't see too much on account of the smoke, but uh, no immediate worries. Hey, you know what? I finally got rid of that horse meat. <laughs> nice butt, King. Really, man, like excellent. Well done, sir. Thanks, boys. Torrent nothing. My pleasure, in fact. Ace, you can throttle on down now, girl. <laughs> Ace. Lothar. Lothar, get up here quick. Bring the first aid stuff. Ace is bleeding like a stuck pig. Uh, Roger, Major. Shoot. The fire warning lights are red on number three and four engines. That must be the source of all that smoke. Shutting down, three and four. Lothar, Lothar, where the heck are you? Oh, God, darn it, hang in there, Ace, old gal. The smoke is still pretty thick back then. Never mind that. What happened, Ace? Uh, 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 she, uh, seems to have cranial contusions due to... Must be the hard contact with the emergency anti-igneous equipment. Say what? It looks like the fire extinguisher came loose and knocked her on the head. Uh, 
However, her breathing is within life-sustaining parameters. The best thing would be to dress the wound here, then move Ace down to, to the bunk uh, in bomb control. Well, d d do it then, Lofa. Just, just do it, huh? Yes, sir. Major, dude. What is this, White? Approaching the Russian coast. Roger. Hey, hey, are your fuel gauges acting like mine? Kind of jumping around like they're having a sugar fit? You let me worry about that, kid. We're still flying, and we're going to stay flying. Goldie? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to jam out the radar with everything you got. Then I'm going to take it right down onto the deck. We're going down so low you boys can unpack your fishing gear and snag us a rooski caviar sturgeon. <laughs> they won't find us till kingdom come. It won't fly in so low. Use up twice as much fuel, King. Hey, who exactly is flying this, Craig Goldie? The pilot or the radio man? Whatever you say, boss. Look, we lost a lot of time, boys. I'm setting her up for maximum speed. Whoa! Hold on a nanosecond, man. Let me check the fuel consumption figures. Make sure we've got enough to get us back home. I don't swim so good. Don't you worry, that little pinhead of yours, son. We got us a delivery to make. And by God, we are gonna make it! In Dr. Strangelove, dramatized for radio by Carrie Shale, from the novel by Peter George, Carrie Shale was Dr. Strangelove, Lieutenant Sweets Kivel, Lieutenant Barney Goldberg, Lieutenant Lothar Zog, Group Captain Lionel Mandrake, General Jack D. Ripper, and President Merkin Muffley. King was William Hootkins. Turgidson, Sean Barrett. Ace, Lorelai King. Mary Ellen, Laurel Lefko. Guano, Stuart Milligan. Staines, Peter Whitman. Cartwheel, William Roberts. And Ball, John Baddeley. The narrators, Whoop and Schlong, were Teresa Gallagher and Nigel Anthony. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Technical presentation was by Graham Harper, and the production assistant was Joe Hill. Dr. Strangelove was a BBC World Service drama production directed by Gordon House. <laughs>